Well, from spending $503 a head to fet the Mexican president to Casa Loma in Toronto to $1,300 a person for meals aboard the planes, one thing is for sure, Trudeau's liberals are not into austerity. I want to bring in Ray Hurd right now because, Ray, you were there in the late 80s when Brian Mulroney was on a honeymoon. He had won the biggest majority in Canadian history, trounced your old boss, John Turner, but eventually it got to people that they felt Mulroney was out of touch with the Gucci loafers in living the high life. The Conservatives have done a really good job at exposing just some stupid expenses over the last little while. Does this eventually hurt Justin Trudeau or at least start setting the narrative that he is a spendthrift with your money? Well, I think like uh, Brian in the latter period of his generally successful eight years that great gave us free trade. I think that Mulroney had a long honeymoon with the media. Justin has had one of roughly nine, ten months. But guess what? The mainstream media, what Ezra Levant calls the media party in the last week, has turned against Justin because the two people who are his puppet masters or puppet mistress and master, Katie Telford and the famous or notorious Gerald Butts, double billed for moving expenses in Butts's case before he got caught and paid a small amount back. Butts was claiming from the taxpayers twice the income of the average Canadian family to move from Toronto mm -hmm. to Ottawa. So this is catching up. Even the Globe and Mail, even the Toronto Star, which has been the Bible of the Liberal Party lately, they have realized now that the grassroots of Canada expected a lot more from Justin. And Justin actually, unlike Manuel Roney, Justin promised a lot more. He, he's broken his promises, billing the taxpayer over $1,000 a meal on a government jet is way beyond Monty Python. If you wrote that yeah. in a script, it would be spiked. You know, so I, I, I went through some of the expenses, Ray, and you know, $1,300 on a flight from per person from Ottawa to Ankara, Turkey. Uh, so yeah. that's just there and back, $1,300. Most people would say, I could feed my family very well for $1,300 bucks in, a, in a month. And then the, the trip to London, uh, Malta, and Paris, another $1,300 per person. At least that you can say, well, it was over several flights, you know, not just there and back. Uh, but then you, you get to even ones to, to Washington, D.C., 41 bucks ahead. It's an hour and 20 minutes. Are you yeah. drinking Johnny Walker Blue? Uh, on the, the, the trip from Washington, Ottawa to Washington, they barely have time to hand out a Diet Coke. Sure. Well, I don't think Butts, who is the de facto prime minister, um, Justin's de jure prime minister, I don't think Butts realized that the media, as they always do, would turn against them that viciously. If you look at the cartoons in the Toronto Star, for example, they are brutal. And while this is happening where you live in Ottawa, in Toronto, because she has been greedy, Kathleen Wynne is dead premier talking now. She's virtually finished. I know serious liberals, some of them in her cabinet, who think the only way they can save themselves is to dump her. Now, Justin has a similar problem, not only with this culture of entitlement that the media has exposed for good reason, that's a huge problem, but Dion is acting in a fashion that is almost beyond comprehension. Justin says one day they're going to sign an extradition treaty with the People's Republic of China, a dictatorship he much admires, mm -hmm. you may remember that, and Dion says the next day they're not doing it. Yeah, that, that who, is that's who's quite command, puzzling. Who's commanding the ship of state? So you've got dual problems, a lack of credibility on big policies. I don't know where they stand on marijuana legalization, on assisted suicide, or 
constitutional change so we have a new way to vote. We don't know these things. Justin's not telling people. He thinks it could be based on promises because he was loved and trusted. And I think it's significant that the four or three-year-old future king of Canada refused to do a handshake with him when the royal family of Canada arrived in British Columbia. You're bringing up the high five, Ray. Okay, let me bring it back. Let me bring it back to uh, the expense thing. I got to end on this, okay? The conservatives have been trying since this guy was elected to lay a glove on him. They haven't been able to. But all these media stories about expense scandals came from the conservatives filing order paper questions. They is this the first glove that they've been able to lay on Justin Trudeau since he became prime minister? Definitely is. And can I remind you of ad scam under Cretchen, the biggest scandal in Canadian history. Ad scam was a simple process of laundering fees and donations given to civil servants back to the Liberal Party. This is even more blatant than Hillary Clinton's foundation. So ad scam was the biggest scam in Canadian history, but Wynn is trying very hard to eclipse ad scam every day with her outrageous policies on power, shutting down. Right now, she plans to shut down the solar panels and the windmills that she and Dalton McGinsey put there, and it's costing us billions of dollars. Wow. Ad scam was about, you know, a couple of hundred million, but mm-hmm. Wynn and Justin think in terms of Billions being spent. It'll catch up with them. Justin is lucky. And Wynne is lucky. Neither has a viable opposition leader to oppose them yet. Well, but that day will come. We'll see if that changes. Ray, thanks for the time as always. Okay, thanks, Brian. Hope you like what you just saw. If you did, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's free, and that'll make sure you never miss another Rebel video. Or if you want even more from The Rebel, head over to therebel.media and become a premium member.